Marjaya, the Shi religious authority, is an extensive system of leadership and guidance. Through this system, we learn our religious responsibilities towards Allah by following the guidance of highly qualified, pious scholars. In theory, it makes sense for someone who lacks the requisite skills to tap into the knowledge base of a person who has the ability to guide us. But is it really that simple? What is the need for this institution? Why can't we just work things out for ourselves? And do these scholars really understand our problems to be able to guide us effectively? Before we can answer these and many other questions, we must understand our relationship with Allah. The Quran tells us that the goal behind the creating of the jinn and humanity is to worship Allah. As God says, I did not create the jinn and the humans except that they may worship me. And thus, the five roots of religion, the belief in the oneness of God, prophethood, the day of resurrection, the justice of God, and the divinely appointed leadership after the prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him and his family, all of these must be understood and accepted through our own reasoning. However, when it comes to how to worship Allah, we must sincerely ask ourselves that does Allah expect us to worship Him in a particular way? Or can we worship Him however we want to? Well, throughout history, Allah has taught humanity how He wants to be worshipped. For example, in the pre-earthly event, Iblis, known as Satan, was ordered to worship Allah in a specific way, but he refused and wanted to worship Allah how he saw fit. And so in chapter number 2, verse 34, God says, And when we said to the angels, prostrate before Adam, they prostrated, but not Iblis. He refused and acted arrogantly, and he was one of the faithless. Now as humanity grew in number, and prophet after prophet came, these men of Allah taught their communities the fundamentals of faith and how they should worship Allah. But the question is that how do we know what He wants? Well, the Quran provides, as we know, mostly general guidelines on the practical laws, the ahkam. So, for example, the Quran tells us to establish the prayer and perform the hajj. None of the details are mentioned of how to do this. During the time of the Prophet, may God's peace and blessings be upon him and his family, People would watch him perform acts of worship and follow accordingly. But the question arises that after his death and the passing away of the first 11 Imams and the occultation of the 12th Imam, where are people supposed to get their guidance from? The Prophet and the Imams never left us to wander in the darkness, as by definition, they are sent to guide us to Allah. And so they encouraged their companions to narrate their hadith, and at the same time to learn the methods to derive rulings when they come across new issues. Thus, a system started during the era of the infallibles and continues today, in which highly trained scholars called mujtahids exert all intellectual efforts to determine what Allah wants from the Muslims in the sphere of Islamic law.